So what's better, using insert effects or send and returns? In one of my recent videos where I did a mixed breakdown of a Sons of Horus song, I mentioned that I had a bunch of effects returns at the bottom of the session. So today I'm gonna to tell you about what this technique is, why you should use it, and how to set it up. If you are just interested in how to get it set up in either Logic or Pro Tools, just find the timestamp down below. What is up guys, Alex Mana Creates here. I'm an audio engineer, mixer, and producer who has been working in the professional music industry for over a decade, and I'm here to help you make music you can be proud of. Now, this topic of sends and returns is something that I find a lot of newer producers and engineers don't know that much about, but it is a staple in the workflow of a lot of the top mixing engineers. So to start out, what is the difference between inserts and send and returns? Now, when I say using an insert, I simply mean putting a plugin in an insert slot on a track in your DAW. Now, you might be thinking that's just the way things work. And for a lot of things, that's true. But when it comes to effects such as reverbs and delays, that's where send and returns can get very helpful. Now, the send and return technique is where you put a send on a track that then goes through a virtual internal bus in your DAW that then feeds an aux track with the desired effect on it. This send essentially creates a copy of the sound that then goes through the desired effect and gets mixed back in alongside the original sound. This allows you to have the same effect with one instance of the plugin on multiple different tracks and will allow you to have a different amount of that effect on each track depending on how much you send. So when should you use sends versus inserts? Most people are very familiar with using inserts because that's kind of how the DAW works by default. So the question is more, when do you use sends and returns over using just an insert on a track? And of course, everything I say, there are exceptions because it's all about how you want to bend the rules. So I'm speaking to the most basic and standard uses to get you started. An easy way to think about it is inserts are for anything creating the core of a specific sound. This would include compressors and EQs that you're using to create and shape the original core sound. And then sends are used for anything that you're adding additionally to that sound. This is why they're typically referred to as effect sends because you're using them for things like reverb and delay or even some modulation that you're adding into the original sound and possibly across multiple sounds in your session. Typically, when you use the send and return method, you still have the original sound because like I said, the send creates a copy. So this effect you've created is being added to the original sound. It does not replace it like an insert does. So some basic examples of this that I use in my mixes. General reverbs that I want to use across multiple tracks, such as vocal reverbs. An effect you want as parallel processing to something such as a drum reverb that you want to send from multiple microphones or a guitar effect that you want to add additionally to the original guitar sound. And maybe a back bust like drum parallel compression or a vocal distortion back bust where you want parallel processing alongside the original sound. So you might be saying, I've never used this and I always put reverbs across every single track in my mix and it's never caused a problem for me, so why should I bother learning this? And I wanna just highlight a few advantages of this technique that really can help you, especially when your sessions get bigger and bigger and bigger. One is being able to save a set of returns that you just import into all your mixes to get you started mixing even faster. Two, it's easier to manipulate the sound when you're tweaking your mix. For instance, if you decide or you get a mix note back from the client that they want the vocal reverb a little bit shorter. It's much easier to just change the one instance of the reverb instead of going into every single individual track and changing the reverb setting on each one. Number three is the speed of use. Like I said, it's easier to manipulate one instance of a plugin than 10 different instances of a plugin. If you want just a little bit less reverb on a whole bunch of tracks, you can either turn down the return or turn down the sends using a group. You can't really do that if you have to go into each individual plugin to turn down the mix knob. And number four is process processing power. This is less of a concern nowadays with computers the way that they are. However, reverbs and delays can be very processor intensive, so minimizing that can help you in the long run, especially as your sessions get bigger and bigger and bigger. So now let me give you a little insight into how to set these up in Logic and then in Pro Tools. So to set up a send and return in Logic, it's actually very, very easy. You first select the tracks that you would like to add the send effect on, then you find the little channel right here in the mixer called sends. And if you have both of them selected, all you have to do is click on the send and find bus 
and then pick a bus that has nothing written beside it. So bus one for me is empty. So I'll click on that and then it will automatically add a send to bus one on both of the tracks that I had selected. And it will also create an auxiliary track over here that is being fed by bus one. Then all you have to do is insert the effect that you want on that aux track. So go to audio effects and pick your plugin that you want. So for instance, a reverb. So once that's loaded up on that aux track, just make sure that the wet and dry mix is 100% wet. Then what you do is just go back over to the two tracks that you added the sends to and you just turn them up with this little circle right beside and you can click and drag. If you have them both selected, they will both turn up automatically, but you can also just go and select one at a time. If down the line you'd like to add reverb to another track that you didn't add originally, you can just go to that track and add a send the same way you did before. Click on the send, go to the bus, and then you'll find bus one to aux one. And now it is also sending to this same reverb return auxiliary track. So to add a send and return in Pro Tools, the easiest way is make sure that you're seeing the send slots on either your edit window or your mix window. Click on one of the send slots and then go down to new track. This will then bring up the new track dialog already populated with a stereo auxiliary track, which you can then name. Now, while you don't have to name it and you could leave it as whatever the default populated name is, I would highly recommend naming it with whatever your intent is for this effect. So for instance, keys reverb. It will then create an auxiliary track right below the track that you selected originally. And then it will automatically populate the send that you clicked on with the new keys reverb send, which is going to a virtual bus that has been now automatically named as keys reverb, which is sending to the aux track, which it created automatically right below there, that's being fed from the keys reverb bus. And now you can go add an insert of whatever effect you want on that auxiliary track. So let's just find a reverb. And then on the effect, make sure the mix knob is all the way 100% wet. And then you control how much reverb you want on the track you're sending from with the little send fader here. And now if you wanna add that reverb send to another track, you can either copy it using the option and click and drag feature in Pro Tools. You can also go to that track and click on the send slots and go to the bus menu and then find the bus that you've already named. Or if you're in a newer version of Pro Tools, you can also just click on the send slot where you'd like to add it and start typing keys reverb and it will pop up with the bus so you can just hit enter and it'll automatically add that send in that send slot. If at any point you want to rename that bus so that you can easily find it, all you have to do is go to one of the send slots where it is, right click and click rename. Then you type in the new name, which might be vocal rev, and then it changes the name of the bus, which will show up anywhere that that send is present. But that is it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment down below with your favorite use of sends and returns, whether that be the way that you use it most in your mixes or an interesting way that you use it maybe we hadn't thought of. Now, if you wanna know more about setting up, saving, and using track presets in Pro Tools, I have a video for that coming soon, so subscribe so you don't miss that. I will see you in the next video. Until then, always be creating.